Hi, I'm Tracy Ayer, and this is my newest, not quite complete painting, Kaleidoscope. And I'm just going to try and discuss with you why it's hard to use one of these when your painting is like this. And some people are going to be great at this, but it does have it, its challenges. And let's just take a look at what I'm uh, what I'm talking about here. First thing I try and do, looking at a pocket color wheel is try and figure out which colors are in my painting that are dominant. So obviously we're in this range here. We do have a lot of yellow going on, but we also have yellow green. We have classic, like just green. And then we have some blue greens too. So my painting with this color wheel is properly described mostly like this. <laughs> so these colors, are in the painting. So when you have this many colors in your painting, it is difficult to flip over the wheel and then figure out which way you should go with the color uh, split complements and color complements. Because I could easily go, well, it's mostly yellow, let's go with violet. Or here, there's a lot of yellow green, let's go with red violet. So my uh, thinking with the violet that you see here is there's a lot of yellow but as the painting progressed because it's dynamic right it's being done by a human being some of the more dominant colors are like this and this so this color may not describe the shadow area as best i could do it and so may, that may be why I'm looking at this and going, what is wrong with this painting? But it's like when you have so much of this color wheel taken up with your painting's uh, layout, it can be pretty demanding, which is why I go to a Munsell wheel then. <clears throat> so this is the range, red, orange, yellow range. Uh, and downwards you get more shade added. And it makes it a bit easier for me to kind of look at this painting and go, okay, there is a, a, a lot of red, orange, yellow, and some greens in here, including um, some of the yellow greens, like deeper greens, and I do have some blues and blue greens. So that's in this range. I know it's hard to see with this huge wheel, but here's the thing. When I look at this, the discord that I'm seeing is a purplish color. It's almost purple, in fact. And I think it pretty well describes what I've got right here. So in the middle of this painting, which is mostly about these colors, I've got the, this discordant color. If I wanted a complementary color, it would be more this color. So it's much more clear with a Munsell wheel when you're using a, like a large range of colors. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to spend some time going in and making that purple into a more bluish purple, more along the lines of this, or even this. And we'll see how that, what that gets me. Obviously, as I move the wheel to say it's going to be more purplish blue, I can look up at the top and see that it's still describing a lot about my painting from reds and oranges and yellows to yellow greens over here and deeper greens down at the bottom. So let's just see what it turns out to be. All right. And I didn't mean to imply that when you're doing this, that you want to eliminate all discords. You don't want to eliminate all discords. That's actually the wrong way to think about it. Some of this color is going to be really punchy. What you don't need in this arrangement is a lot of that color. So I'm going to have to touch up things like her lashes, the shadow areas, that kind of thing. But I will be leaving some of this color, which is a discordant color in the painting, to help with its impact. But yeah, uh, let's see how it turns out. Okay, so now I've gotten some... Uh, I don't really use black, but there's Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to put the last final touches in here. Hopefully the paint's gray does show up. It's mixed with a bit of indithrine blue right now. Watch it not work. I'm hoping it doesn't pick up too much color and it does add a little bit of depth. Right now it's blending a bit, but I'm starting to see the effect that I want to have. So that's good. And I will just 
pretty much round out these two areas with this darker color, give it some depth. I kind of work backwards to how a lot of wool painters work, which is dark to darkest areas to lightest areas. And there is nothing wrong with using that method. It's very tried and true. And some of my favorite artists that I admire the most actually give great tutorials on doing exactly that, going dark to light in oils. And so, yeah, it's kind of the opposite of how you would do it with watercolor, which is much more transparent. Anyway, wish me good luck. I will show you how it looks when it's done. All right, so she's done. Um, and you can see that there's some Payne's Gray in here on the darks underneath her neck here. Those are the deepest points of shadow. There's some in here and then the edges of her lips. I put some blues into her lashes. They're not meant to be super dark. And some darker blues down here too. With a little bit more blue in this area, still retaining the discordant color for a bit of punch in areas like here and up here. So yeah, she's done. And I should just let her dry now and stop tormenting this painting. Yeah, and the brush is actually clean. It's again a Trekel 6 uh, filbert. Not that you can tell because I've so grinded down the top of it. But I'm going to let her dry and see how I like her after a couple of days.